Okay, folks, look, after looking at the thumbnail, I know you guys like Philly cheesesteak, so I know you're gonna love this. We making Philly cheesesteak egg rolls. Let's get it. Now, I want you guys to come on here and take a look at some of these ingredients that we got out here. This is gonna be key, because I want you to know, if you've been watching any of my videos, when I make uh, any type of egg roll, I've always used this egg roll wrapper right here, say plant-based, and if you look at this picture right here, you see it got them little bumps on it or whatever, Look at the egg rolls that I made, especially when I did the peach cobbler egg rolls, you'll see that they have them little bumps, right, from when you deep frying. This right here, this is what we want, that spring roll pastry. These right here are nice and smooth. I'm gonna do both of these so you guys can see the difference, but when you want them to be smooth, this is your one right here. Now, you see I got a whole lot of ingredients right here. You know what I mean? Well, not, not really like a whole lot of ingredients. I got a few ingredients. Don't forget the full ingredient list will be on my website, smokingandgrillingwithab.com, and that's W-I-T-A-B.com, right? So obviously we're gonna be doing the, you know, the deep fry, right? But here I'm gonna be using a ribeye. If you look at this right now, it's kind of like stiff. I had this in the uh, freezer just so that it's easier to cut and shave when the meat is like, you know, kind of like rigid, you know, and tight and firm, right? So that's why we want to put it in the freezer, right? Just to give you guys an example, I'm gonna just cut this right here like this and just so you can see it. Now, if I wanted to cut here, I'll do it this way. You guys look right there, look. You want to cut yourself some thin slices, just like this, right? You see that when I say thin, that's what I mean, right? So I'm gonna take these and just set this off to the side. Let me go ahead and finish shaving this down. You know what I mean? Uh, let me get a whole bunch of these shavings and then we gonna move forward. All right, so now that I'm done, we're shaving this ribeye down, right? You know, thin pieces, you can see right here. This is what you want. Now, remember, I take all of my ingredients and I put them all together as I need them. What we're doing is we're getting ready to make our marinade, folks. So we take all of these right here, right? Don't forget, full ingredient list is on my website. I'm not leaving nobody out. You guys go over there, and the reason I do it that way, I promise you, when you guys get a chance to look at that, you're gonna start wandering around, find something else that you like. You know what I mean? You're gonna say, you know what? Let's make this too, maybe tomorrow night. Right, so, hot soapy water there. Let me go ahead and grab my whisk. And then if you look at that right there, you see there's a little bit of a reaction, right? That's what you wanna have, cause that's, gonna, that's what's gonna be, to kinda like make our meat a little bit on the tender side. Look at that. You'll hear it once you put it in there. All right, so now we'll just take our beef, right? This is our ribeye steak. Put this in like this. And now we just want to give it, make sure all your, your shaved meat that you cut, that is coating every one of these. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cover this and set this aside and let this go ahead and marinate for at least 30 minutes, but one hour be ideal. You know what I mean? So I'm gonna let mine marinate for one hour. Now I want you guys to take a look right here. Look, this has been an hour. You can see it right here. Oh yeah, it's ready to go. Now, I already started warming up my uh, my cast iron because this is where I'm gonna be cooking everything in, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and add my infused olive oil in here. You just wanna put about a tablespoon in there. You know, I'm gonna get it nice and hot. Now that my oil is hot, right? What I wanna do is, I just wanna add all of my meat, right? Now, I wanna tell you guys this right here. Listen, it don't take long. I'm gonna say three to five minutes. As soon as it hits this hot cast iron, mm, get what kicks back, man. It should remind you like being in the steakhouse. Real nice, folks. Now, as we let this cook, right? Again, you don't wanna go past five minutes. You don't want this to be overcooked. You don't want nothing to turn out a little bit on the tough side, right? But you can see this right here. You can see how it's cooking down. Real nice, putting that color on there. Again, your kitchen should be on on fire. Now I'm gonna take some of these mushrooms. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna chop some of these up. Right, so we just. Now this has been four minutes they've been in here. Look at that right there. Ooh now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put them in, you know, a bowl separately. I turned off my fire, right? We don't wanna overcook these. Now that seasoning that we put in here, on here, as using as a marinade, I promise you folks, that's what's gonna give it that, that ooh wee as far as that flavor go, right? Now, have that set aside, right? Look at this in the pan right here. Look at the fine that we have. We wanna use all of that. That's gonna be all of that flavor, folks. So the only thing I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna come with my onions, right? Now listen, I'm gonna give this about a 30 second head start, that's it. Then after that, I'm gonna come with my 
bell pepper, and then I'm coming with my, I mean my, uh, my mushrooms. Now you just want to cook this, like I say, for about three to four minutes, right? So this will absorb everything, pick everything up off of the pan. You know what I mean? Nothing should be sticking anyway. We steam these, and you just want these to brown just a little bit. Now, as far as my fire go, I'm looking at it right now. I like to have a medium high flame when I do this part right here. Now I'll just give it just a pinch of salt. Just one pinch of do. Then we crack some pepper over the top. Now, I'm coming up approaching, I'm approaching four minutes, right? Turn my fire off. We got our meat over here, right? Get this over here to one side. And what we're gonna do is, we, I'll just put it all in here together. All right, so what I did was right now, I just laid out. Remember I said I'm gonna show you guys two different wrappers, right? This is this one right here. These are these, you can see, it's kind of like transparent almost. Uh, I don't know, you can probably see my fingers and everything behind there. You know what I mean? Uh, that right there, or let me do it this way. Maybe it shows up. But either way, these are a little bit more thinner. These don't have the big knots on them. You know what I mean? And uh, that's these. So I'm going to show you how we do it. Now, I just went ahead and mixed everything in this bowl right here. You guys can see, look at that. Nice, juicy, not overcooked, right? So that's going to be my filling. Now, you just want to take your egg, go ahead and crack it. Right, then we just want to scramble this in there. And I'm gonna do something a little bit different than what I normally do. For this here, I'm just gonna go ahead and use the fork. Right. Usually when I do it, I only wet one little corner of it as I seal it. But I think on this one here, I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna seal all four edges and then fill it. Easiest way, make the diamond, right? So first, take my finger and I just run this along the edge. Right? Just get your egg wash down here. Now, what I want to do is, I just want to go in here and get some of my filling. Right? And I like to put it like in the center, you know, just like you see. Now, over here on this side, you see I got some provolone. You guys can use shredded cheese. What I'm doing now is, I'm just trying to get rid of all of this cheese that I have. You know what I mean? So I'm going to add some of this in here, just like you see. You know? Oh, yeah, this is going to be right. You know what I mean? We can add more, right? So I'm gonna take the, if you put it at a diamond where the point is coming towards you, you just take this, wrap this together like that. Right, I kind of like bring it down a little bit, bring it like this. Now your first one gonna always be a little bit on the tough side. And then what you wanna do is roll it. We already got it wet. You know what I mean? If it look like it's starting to dry out before you can uh, get to it, it's okay. We just add it like this, keep it nice and tucked and just roll, roll, and roll, right? And then this right here, then I like to put it, you see how this was on there, the, head, the end? I like to like leave it like that. Now for the other one, this is the one you guys see me use quite often on my channel, right? So I just spread one of them out of here. And then I already mentioned that I was gonna show you what I do with a little bit of cream cheese. Now you, this is completely optional to you guys. If you wanna do it, you can do it, but I want you to check it out. It makes it so much a little bit more like, how can I say it, like creamier. You know what I mean? So just take just a little bit, just like you see. Look at this right here, folks. We just raising up the, the game. You know what I'm saying? That's all. Now we'll go ahead and get some of this filling. Put this in here like this. Don't need a whole lot, right? That's probably about the right amount. Now for the cheese, just tear it. And again, you guys have shredded, that works just, actually, it's, it's okay. But I'm gonna be honest with you, anything that you use will be great. You know what I mean? As long as it's provolone, I don't care how you get it in there. You know what I mean? So look, I take it run it like this, just give it like a halfway of a roll, and now I take it, and now we start bringing this over here. And we just start sealing it like it's an envelope. All right, so 
here we go. Now I'm gonna give you guys a little pro tip. What you can do is you can pre-make these, put these in a Ziploc bag and put them in the freezer. You know what I mean? Or if you're gonna make them the, the next day, just put them in the refrigerator and then all you gotta do is, you know, dunk them. And then when you they come out, they're nice and hot. Let them cool for five minutes and then you can give them to your, you know, your folks, right? So let me go ahead and give me a fresh pair of gloves. My, my oil's up to temp. And now we're gonna put these in the inside. So I'll lift this up like this. Right, and I'm gonna start with these first. These are the ones with the thicker wrapper, the ones that I tell you guys that have like the, the little knots on them. We'll start with those. Right, then I'll go ahead and just drop these down. Okay, so let's take a look at them. You can see, you see how they start to float? That tell you they are ready. Now you just wanna get the desired color that you like. You know what I mean? So I'm gonna go ahead and say this right here is right. Right? So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this up, let them rest. Shake off some of that, some of that excess oil, and I'll put them right here. Now remember I was talking about the little knots? That's the flavor. I mean, that's the uh, knots I was talking about. You can see that. I know it has a name, folks, but I'm not sure what that name is. So we'll just go with the knots. I'll put those in there right there. And you can see how that provolone or some of that cream cheese is just starting to come out the side. Mm -hmm. Now these right here is egg rolls, folks. Yes, sir. Now for the very the other ones, now these won't get them. Now check these out. Okay, so you guys saw the difference, you know what I mean? One, a little bit more transparent, so you can actually almost see what you put in the inside. You know what I mean? By putting that dark, dark steak in there, you can see that. But listen, I'm not finna over talk it. I'm finna go ahead and get into a bite of one of these, folks. Cheers, y'all. Yes, sir. Now look, after eating that one, what you guys, you didn't hear that real, that, that real crunchy crunch to it, right? Now, here go the other one with the other wrapper that I tell you, if you put them side by side, look at that right there. You don't really see the, the you know, the little bumps, which is nothing wrong with that. I like these and I like these too, but you're gonna notice, you're gonna notice something right now, right? So listen, here we go. Again, cheers. Hmm. They don't last long, folks. So, with it being, you know, football season, you know what I mean? This is good any time of the year, you know what I mean? But these are especially cool, especially if you're hosting like little parties or something like that. You know, these little finger foods, they can grab them, run around. Only thing you gotta do is probably vacuum, you know, from some of the flakes getting on the carpet, cause they nice and crunchy. Outside of that, these are Philly cheesesteak egg rolls. Now, if you're new to my channel, let me take this time to say, thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like, smash that subscribe button and tell everybody out there, there's a channel out here that's simplifying these recipes and taking the mystery out of cooking. And you know what I'm about to do, I'm out.